Welcome back to a new video about current sources. This is our example number six. We continue with our BGT current sources. In this case, we look at the scaling of a current from a reference to a load current. We have seen in the previous videos that we made the reference current as close as possible to the load current. In this case, we will place the branches in parallel to create larger current values maybe four times three times or two times in this case we will look at how we can do that using this simple current mirror upscaling of course we will do that in the calculation step by step and verify our calculations using spice simulations so let's look at our example we have this generic circuit here given you see the two dc voltage sources this is again this part only the two qr and the q1 and also the resistor here that's actually our simple current mirror we just that uh, we have discussed in example number one. We have now also in parallel to that, it's Q2 and also Q3, etc., up to Qn. So we can here have here multiple transistors in parallel. The more you have, the more current you can create by combining these branches together and then create larger currents. The ratio of the current from the QR, which is our reference, transistor to the Q1, Q2, Q3, etc. combined is defined by the ratio of the emitter areas of these transistors. So if you make the, let's say, one transistor area, emitter area, five times larger, you will get, if you neglect the base currents, five times more current here compared to the reference current. That is actually how it works in BGDs. In this specific case, we will look at this circuit where we have the QR again is equal to Q2, Q1 is equal to Q2, is equal to Q3. That means they are matched. They have exact same early voltage. They have exact same beta and they have also exact same area. So they, have, they are just a copy of each other. And we have only one DC source, which is a 15 volts here. And we assume that the VBE here is 0.7. That's also for the other three transistors. We also know the resistor value, which is actually what we have determined in example number one after tuning. And that is this value, the resistor here for the reference current. And what we like to know, calculate, is the total load current IT, which is the summation of the I1, I2, and I3. And I1, I2, and I3 are the collector currents of the Q1, Q2, and Q3. So how do we do this? How can we calculate this load current the total load current so let's look at our solutions of course we will always designate the nodes here so for our calculations we start with node x and also node y and we did that before so we know that we need the kirchhoff's current law here at node x and that is equal to irf is equal to icr which is this i collector value of this qr plus this ibr because this branch is again split in node y plus ib and this is an important uh, note here. IB is here not the base current of the Q1. It is actually the summation of all the base currents of the Q1, Q2, and Q3. They have exact same base currents. So the Q1, Q3, and Q3 have exact same base currents. But the, together they make the IB. So that means IB is three times the base current of Q1 or Q2 or Q3, that doesn't matter. But it is important that this is not the base current of Q1. Let's designate this equation now as equation number one and go towards this definition because we know since the VBE is the same for all the transistors, that is really an important uh, information. We can write that the collector currents for all of the transistors are the exact same. So ICR is equal to I1, which is also the collector current, I2 and I3. So that's actually in general form, it is up to the transistor you have that's now equation number two we can also say that the base currents are exact same because they are related to the uh, collector current using the beta and a set and this is equation number three and i said before here in equation number one that ib is really a summation of all the base currents here and that and there are n base currents so n transistors that means n times the base current of the reference transistor and let's call this on now equation number four now we work now towards the analysis we want and now the emitter current is also in a similar fashion equal to each other for all transistors because the base and the collector together make the emitter so that's also the same so let's also call that equation number five 
Now, we can also write the following. We can say, instead of doing this, we can say IC and IB of the reference current will be together, make the IE, which is our emitter current. Now, let's call this now equation number six. Now, we can also say the emitter current of, the, uh, of this QR is also beta plus one times the base current. Now, when we do that, and name this number seven, we can now take the number four, equation number four, which is IB is equal to N times N, N times IBR and substitute it in here. And also take this equation number seven and then I'll put it all in equation number six. So what do you get? You get now the following. You have now this expression. This is from equation number seven and this is from equation number four. Now you see here only a known is here IBR, which is from the base current of the QR. Now taking this together, you have this equation, and now making now this equation number eight, we can now say by using the equation number four, we can express equation number eight as follows. Why? Because IBR, the base current of the QR, is also equal to the base current of the Q1 or Q2 or Q3. It doesn't matter, I just choose the B1, IB1. Now, if I call this equation number one and move on, and I can also say the relationship between the collector current and also the base current of the Q1, not this one, remember, is also defined by the beta. So I1 is equal to beta times IB1. So I have this one, and if I now substitute this equation, equation number nine, we have this. Now, you see already what's happening. We have now a relationship between the reference current and our load current, one of the load currents, so the part of the load current. If I now rewrite this, call this first equation number 10, and rewrite this in terms of the IREF, so I1 is equal to IREF times the inverse of this one, which is shown here. Now, when I divide now the numerator and denominator by beta, you have this expression, which is actually what we wanted. Now, you can see that your load current is related to the reference current by two parameters, beta and the number of transistors you have here in parallel. Now remember now the current mirror we have discussed in example number one. If n is one, which is of course this only, then this is a one plus one over this beta. And that is exactly the same formula we had. Now we have in this case three, so we will then have one plus three later in our calculations. You can also say how much is in the total current. Now, that's just a summation of I1, I2, and I3. Since these are equal to each other, we just do IT is N times I1 or N times I2. It doesn't matter. And that's actually shown here. So you just multiply the numerator by N. Okay, now we have the necessary information and just move on with this uh, specific circuit and then calculate the rest of the parameters. We know that the VCC, again, using Kirchhoff's voltage law from here is the voltage across R plus the voltage here, which is VBE. And then we can express the I reference current, VCC minus the VBE over R, which is known. That will give us 50 minus 0.7 over this 2.807 kilo ohms will give us very close to 5.1 milliamps. Then we have the following. Now, in this case, if I make NS3, which is what we have, we have then I1, which is from this equation, 0.0051, which is 5.1 milliamps, over 1 plus 1 plus 3 over 100. What do you get? Remember, we had in the current meter 5 milliamps. Now it, is, it has decreased because there are now transistors in parallel. So the error you make actually by copying is larger. So we have now 4.9 approximately milliamps. But if I, this is also true for I2, also for I3. So if I now want to calculate the total current, that is just three times what we just calculated. You can also do it directly and you get now 14.71 milliamps. And we will check this later in our simulations. Now, when you go down, for example, to NS2, let's see this. This is now for two transistors in parallel, the same format for just one transistor less. You get now the following equation. You only have now I1 and I2, no I3 anymore. This is now two, so the NS2. You calculate this, you see now it gets closer to 5 milliamps because the error is smaller. So you get now 4.951 milliamps. Again, the total, and this is also equal to I2. And the total load current is down two times what you have here, which is then 9.903 milliamps. 
So that is now what we have. Now let's bring these values here and the reference current also. And now look at the simulation result. This is now the complete simulation result. The first one here on the left top one is our current mirror we just discussed in example number three. You see the 5.1 milliamps as our reference current for this uh, resistor. And you see also that the base currents are e exact same and also the 5 milliamps here. Now, now we do step by step. We increase now the parallel uh, transistors here. 5.1 milliamps still for the IRF. That doesn't change. But it does not uh, making this two parallel transistors. It doesn't make it is two times five milliamp, but it is smaller. So you see the 9.903 milliamps, which is what we have calculated for two transistors in parallel. So that's confirming our situation. And also the base current here is not exact same as the base current there because this base current is the double of the ba individual base currents of Q1 and Q2. Now going to the uh, three transistors in parallel you see again here 14.712 milliamps as we have calculated and also our reference current is still 7.1 milliamps it doesn't change the only change is actually our load current there are actually uh, two changes one is the individual current so the collector current goes down by increasing the number of parallel transistors and thereby also the total load current but you see that the collector currents are all the same and the base, total base current is three times larger than individual base currents of Q1, Q2, and Q3. So this is confirming our results in our calculation. So this is exactly what we wanted. Now we can also downscale our current, low current, by starting here with a larger area transistor and go down. For example, you make this area six times larger and then make this only a unit area then you go down by a factor of six that's also possible all right guys this is our example number six where we discuss the upscaling in this case and we will continue in the next videos about the current mirrors using the mosfet variations and then also discuss the similar topologies there if you have any questions comments please let me know in the comment section i will try to answer them as soon as possible see you next time in another video take care